Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 1, Week 6, Science. For everyone else, that just means that we're talking about the five major groups of vertebrates. Last week, we talked about invertebrates. This week, we're talking about vertebrates. So if you haven't already, make sure you hop on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. Uh, grab your workbooks there. You can buy them at that website. I think that you'll get a lot out of them. They've been designed to go along with each of these videos to expand your knowledge on each of the topics that we're talking about. If you would like, I have them by quarter as well. So we're about to hop into the second quarter. So if you don't want to have to buy the first quarter, you can buy the second quarter on as an option as well. Without further ado, let's start doodling. Like I said, today we're going to be talking about the five major groups of vertebrates. And why are they all considered vertebrates? So let's answer this question. What is a vertebrate? If you remember last week, we talked about how invertebrates do not have a backbone. Similarly, vertebrates are animals that do have a backbone. All vertebrates have some things in common, one of them being that hollow backbone, another one being that they have a skull, or you can call this a cranium, and this protects the brain in the vertebrates. Another important characteristic that they all share is that all vertebrates reproduce by mating between males and females. So let's jump into our first group, and that's fish. All fish are cold-blooded animals, and that just means that their body temperature is controlled by the type of environment that they're in. If they're in very cold water, then they will become colder. If they are in very warm water, then they will become warmer. All fish have backbones, fins, and gills. So what are gills? Well, gills allow them to breathe in water. You and I use lungs to exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide from the air, but fish do not have lungs. They have gills and gills help fish to get oxygen from the water instead of the air. Almost every large body of water in the world contains fish and this includes streams, rivers, ponds, lakes, and oceans. Fish also differ in the depths at which they live in these bodies of water. Some fish live up towards the surface whereas others like to live closer down towards the bottom. There are even some types of fish that live in the depths of the ocean. Because all of these places can have fish, this means that fish virtually live in both fresh and salt water. Now, what do fish eat? Typically, fish eat plants, but some can be predators, which means that they eat other fish or other animals. A shark is an example of this type of fish predator. One characteristic that is unique to fish is they have something called a swim bladder. And this swim bladder fills up with air to help them float. If they didn't have a bladder, then they would have to swim or they would sink. Now, let's talk about our next group amphibians. Amphibians are a group of vertebrates that are also cold-blooded. So again, this means that they must cool off and warm up by using their surroundings, which then influences their behaviors. Amphibians are unique because they live the first part of their lives in water and the last part of their lives on land. So you can see here the life cycle of a frog. First, they hatch from eggs. And when they do this, they have gills, and this helps them to breathe in the water. 
just like fish. They also have fins that help them to swim. Later, as they grow, they grow legs and they begin to grow lungs. This helps them to live on land. The word amphibian even means two lives because part of their life is spent in the water and part of it is spent on the land. The larvae of many amphibians mostly just eat plants, but as they grow, they become carnivores. And because of this, we consider them to be predators. Frogs in particular will eat anything from spiders to beetles to worms. Now let's talk about reptiles. So you might be wondering what's the difference between reptiles and amphibians. Well, as we just talked about, amphibians have a larval stage, just like a tadpole that turns into a frog. Reptiles don't do this. Another thing that's different is that reptiles have scales, whereas amphibians have moist, glandular skin. Reptiles, though, are also cold-blooded. Just like fish and amphibians, they have to maintain a constant body temperature. So some of the behaviors that they do would be to lay out in the sun to keep their body warm. There are many different types of reptiles, including snakes, alligators, turtles, and lizards. Most reptiles also lay eggs. Let's look at a few reptiles. Snakes, for example, are legless. And despite popular belief, only a small amount of snakes are actually poisonous. But most snakes are constrictors, which means that they will squeeze their prey with their bodies until their prey is dead, and then they will swallow it whole. Other reptiles are turtles. Turtles have a big shell to protect them. And surprisingly, some turtles can live for more than 100 years. Now, let's talk about mammals. There are three things that make a mammal a mammal. First, they have glands that give milk. The purpose of this is to feed their babies. Secondly, they are warm blooded. So this is different than the other groups of vertebrates because their bodies help maintain their temperature. For example, if you get too hot, what do you do? You sweat and as you sweat, this cools your body down through the evaporation of the moisture on your skin. If you are cold, what happens? Your hair stands up on your arms. You get what's called goose bumps, or you shiver. This movement and the hair sticking up helps to keep you warm. And third, all mammals have fur or hair. Mammals can live in all types of environments, including the ocean, underground, or even on land. Some mammals can even fly. An example of a flying mammal is a bat. Mammals give birth and take care of their young in different ways. Most mammals typically give birth to live young, so they don't lay eggs. Other mammals, called marsupials, carry they're young in a pouch. An example of a marsupial is a kangaroo or a koala. There are also a few mammals that do lay eggs, and these are called monotremes. An example of a monotreme is a platypus. So even though it lays eggs, it still is considered a mammal. Mammals are often considered to be very intelligent. They have a unique brain con compared to the rest of the groups of vertebrates. So what do mammals eat? Mammals that eat meat are called carnivores. And this includes animals like lions and tigers. Now, there are also mammals that will only eat plants. This is, these are called herbivores. Some examples of herbivores are cows and deer and elephants. Now, you might be thinking, Okay, humans are mammals, but we eat both plants and meat. So what are we? Well, we are something called an omnivore. Omnivores eat both meat and plants. 
Now let's move on to our last category in our vertebrates. And these are the birds. One of the unique characteristics of a bird is that they have feathers. No other animals have feathers. Another important feature of birds is that they also have wings and hollow bones to make them lighter so that they can fly easier. Birds lay eggs like reptiles and amphibians do, but they are not cold-blooded like reptiles and amphibians. They are warm-blooded like mammals. So we talked about feathers. Let's look at feathers more in depth. Feathers are composed of a hollow shaft down the center called a rachis. Connected to the shaft are lots of thin branches called barbs. And even off of the barbs, there are smaller branches called barbules. Now, all birds have feathers, and it is generally thought that this is so that they can all fly, but not all birds fly. Some examples of birds that don't fly are penguins and ostriches. Penguins actually are pretty good at swimming, whereas ostriches are really fast runners. So feathers are more important than just allowing the bird to fly. They also help them keep warm, or provide camouflage. And that's all we have for today on the topic of vertebrates. Make sure throughout the week that you complete those four worksheets in your workbooks. Again, if you need the workbook, you can find that on doodlingthrougheducation.com. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.